this Bible. And uh, Will Rogers once said, it's not what I don't understand about this book that gives me problems. It's what I do understand about it that causes me problems. And the Bible we preach, now, what I want to talk about this morning, if, what if it really is the Word of God? I have no doubt, I believe with all my heart, with everything that is in me, that we have the very words of God, and this Bible is the Word of God, and if this book is true, if the Bible is the Word of God, then America's got a few problems. We've got some problems if this Bible is what it says it is. America has a problem. Heavenly Father, we love you today, Lord. Lord, we pray for our our nation, Lord. We pray for all those, Father, who have just uh, neglected the word of God. Pray for those who have never heard, Lord, that you might send a gospel witness, Father. Help our nation as uh, it's divided today. Uh, Crowds are going different ways, Lord, and it's those who believe the book, it seems like, and those who don't believe the book. Going about to establish their own righteousness, Lord, not having submitted to your righteousness. Help me to preach the truth, Lord, and uh, touch hearts and open hearts, Lord, and let us grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior, Lord, and hold me up by the power of your might. Fill me with the Spirit of God and fill this uh, uh, church today and every heart that's here today with with a teachable spirit and fill this church with the Holy Ghost of God. And we'll thank you and praise you, give you glory for all you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we pray. How did we get here? How do we get if if you know if if God says it the, the like a fellow said a fellow said on the bumper sticker if God said it then I believe it well it don't matter whether you believe it or not if God said it it's going to happen it's the truth it's going to happen whether we believe it or not but but God wants us to come to the light come to the light if this book is true. If the words of God are pure words, if this book is true, then we've got a problem. The Bible says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, the first part of that verse just about divides every political issue in America today and just about uh, everywhere in the world. The world is divided usually based upon The first half of Genesis 1-1 where the Bible says in the beginning God. You either believe that or you don't. If you don't believe in the beginning God then I can pretty much uh, tell all of your political positions. Just about based solely on the fact that whether or not you believe in the beginning God. You say boy that's that's saying a lot there preacher. You, You sure you can do that well I can tell how people usually stand on today's social issues based on whether or not they believe in the beginning God I can tell you how that man thinks about gun control normally about abortion about prayer in schools ten commandments in the public forum I can tell you usually tell you a person's position on the environment on climate change our military the justice system on and on say well I don't believe that preacher well give me no. well how about gun control what's the Bible say about that the Bible says if a man don't don't have a sword let him sell his coat and get him one duh well, I was pretty clear on, on just about everything but you have to believe if you're gonna make God your authority you got to believe God to make God your authority if you don't believe God is your authority then you can you just come up with whatever and you want to come up with and that's what's going on in America today. My, my, my. As an old detective, uh, it's not too tough to read this human psyche when it comes to folks who willingly champion what God says is sin and abomination and wickedness. And yet there's many today who champion those very things. What's that about? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now what if that's true? Uh, Just like God's word says it is, what if that's true? If you believe God and God says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, then that would have to mean, it would follow that that would have to mean that anyone 
anyone and everyone who teaches anything contrary to what God said, obviously, my thought is they must have gotten their degree from the Mickey Mouse Club. Hey, anything and everything except believe God, and you it's hard telling what folks come up with. Clarence Darwin, the Mouseketeer of the Year. He taught that, man, it's crazy. Uh, his theories, now I stress that the, his thoughts were theories. They weren't fact, but yet all the schools today, all the world teaches them now as fact. They started out by saying it was theory, just what one man thought it ought should be and what it was. Nothing to do with scientific fact, but theories. And those stand in direct opposition of God. Isn't that something? Darwin taught that we evolved uh, from one cell, uh, jumped out of a petal turn, uh, puddle, of, uh, turned into a frog, and then to a monkey, and then voila, Dennis Watson. <laughs> I mean... And that's Bible, isn't it? <laughs> God said he made man in his image. What God said about it, what if that's true? What if this whole thing, every word, is pure truth? America's got a problem. Hey, the reason there's such an enormous political divide in America today is because the crowd that believes God is being challenged or being pursued, persecuted, and vilified by the crowd who don't believe God. Hey, the Word of God opposes that crowd on every issue. He that cometh to God must believe that He is. One issue after another. How about abortion? Do you believe God on what God says about abortion? That's in Exodus 21, 22. It says, If men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall surely be punished. Wow. According as a woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as a judge is determined to watch it, and if any mischief follow, the baby dies. What's it say? Then thou shalt give life for life. That's what God says. What if God is right? Life for life. That's in Exodus 21, 23. Hey, if God is right and God does require life for life for every aborted baby, America is in a world of hurt, folks. To the tune of the innocent blood of 60 million dead babies crying out. Innocent blood crying out from the ground. God told Israel in Deuteronomy 19.10 that innocent blood shall not be shed in thy land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance and so blood be upon thee. Psalms 106.38 and shed innocent blood even the blood of their sons and their daughters whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan and the land was polluted with blood. And that's the great curse and the great darkness and the great sin upon America today. What if God is right? That crowd stands up with their signs shouting and shaking their fist at God. My, my, my. We have no God but Caesar. We have our rights. What if, what if, just what if every word of God is pure like the Bible said. Psalms 12, 6, the words of the Lord, words plural of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. What if that's the truth? My, my, my. What if God is right? I, I had a fellow tell me yesterday that uh, one of the kids at school told him that the, that the teacher told him uh, uh, that the Bible was a myth. What if it isn't? What if it's the truth? I had a fellow one, one, I read a fellow one time, I forget who it was, that studied out Hegel's law of probability and just took 
the prophecies and the mathematical, he said the mathematical probability of this Bible not being the pure words of God was infinitesimal. Mathematically, this Bible has to be right. He took like that the Lord was born in, in uh, Bethlehem of Judea, and, and he took like there's one, 26 provinces in Judea, and uh, that's a 1 in 26 probability. And then the 48 prophecies over a, a period of 500 years by 40-something different prophets, and they, every, every one of them came to pass right on the money about the birth of Jesus Christ. He said the, the mathematical probability of, of, of this book not being the truth is like one to the tenth power with 157 zeros behind it. Not that many atoms in the universe. But boy, we're quick to correct it. We're smarter than that. We're smarter than God is, what America wants to say. My, my. But what if this book is true? The schools and the social engineers and the elite uh, media pushing everything ungodly. And what if they're wrong and God is right? My position is that they are wrong and God is right. God is always right. My counsel, the counsel of the Lord, that will stand. Paul told Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 20, he said, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. That kind of science that is pushing things that God says are untrue is false science. Science, true science, is truth. False science is a man's opinion about it that now they're pushing as a truth. America has a problem. Romans 1, 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up to vile affections for even, watch it, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves a recompense of their error which was meat. My, my, my. That's what God says about that business. What if God is right? Hey, if God is right, then the uh, LGBT movement is abomination to God. Hey, that's what God says. Uh, we've got a problem. Leviticus 18, 25. And the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit iniquity there up upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. My, my, my. That's pretty tough. The Bible says a man shall not lie with another man as with womankind. It says it's abomination. And all that stuff is confusion and abomination. And God says that. What if God's right? America's got a problem. That crowd that pushes that has got a problem with God. Got a problem with God. Ezekiel 14, 4, therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth a stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. God says he'll answer this country according to the multitude of our idols. My, my, my. Do you know why we have almost 300 different Bible versions? Because somewhere along the line, religious scholarship became an idol. And God answered them according to their idols. The Holy Scriptures were not committed to religious scholarship for its keeping. It was committed to the church. My, my, my. Ezekiel 7, 3, Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. Hey, I'm just saying if God is real, and he is, and every word he says will come to pass, and it will, what if God is right and the left-wing, Bible-rejecting, Christ-rejecting crowd is wrong. 
Bible says in the last days that men shall wax worse and worse. And they have. And they are. Angry mobs. Spewing lies. The Bible says in the last days men would be without natural affection. We're at, we're at that day. Man can walk past someone laying on the sidewalk. Deader than a hammer. And they'll just walk right past him. Go on about their way. No natural affection for another human being. What's that about? I'm just saying if, if, if this book is right. Are you feeling uncomfortable about that? That maybe God is right. And your opinions about this and that. May not conform to what God says about it. Romans 1.28 says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. That reprobate mind means that you're wasting your time talking to that person. You ever talk to somebody about issues you know you, you wouldn't change your mind with, with a court order? Not interested in facts, not interested in the truth. Mine's made up, that's their story, they're going to stick to it. Nevertheless, what saith the scriptures? What's God have to say about all that business? Oh, but if America would repent, if individuals in America would repent, it would mean, I mean the politicians would have to change to God, God honoring men and women if men and women repented. It would mean the educational change to God honoring curriculum and not God defying and God rejecting curriculum and social engineering to try to convince those children that their Christian heritage was just a youthful mistake. And the greatest rebuttal, the greatest rebuttal to an ungodly, unholy people is the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the cross of Christ. If man would only repent and come to Christ, and it can be done, it can be done. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Isn't that what God told Israel? He said, if my people, if the church would get right first, said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. That's repentance. Said, then I will hear from heaven. I would hear from heaven. He said, I'd forgive their sins. and said, I would heal their land. Our land needs some healing. What stands before us is either a land that is to be healed or a land to be judged. Heard a preacher say, if the Lord don't come back soon, he'll have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know about that. But I know that America is filled with ungodliness, wickedness. He said, interesting thing, he said, I will hear their, I will heal their land. The God of the weather stated that he would heal the land. Now, we don't believe that. We believe that man is in charge of the climate and the weather. What does God say about that? Genesis 8, 22, it said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, hot and cold, summer and winter will not cease. That's what God said, as long as the earth remaineth. But see, God is the one who is in charge of the weather. Throughout the centuries, the ages, God has used weather to bring judgment. He can use the weather to bring blessing, or he can use the weather to bring judgment. What if God is right? Hebrews 6, 18, that by two immutable things, which it was impossible 
for God to lie. Why is it impossible for God to lie? Because God is holy. His very character of holiness, he can't lie. The Bible says God is faithful and cannot deny himself. God has to do what he says he will do because of his own holiness. My, my, my. The Bible says in number 20, Numbers 23, 19, that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. He don't change his mind about it. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken shall he not make it good? Now listen. What you believe today. What you believe today about God. About God's son Jesus Christ. What you do with Jesus Christ will determine your existence, your future throughout all eternity. Hebrews 9, 27, the Bible says, And as is, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, but after this, the judgment. There's a judgment day coming. We've been going through the judgment. We have one more to go through. That's a great white throne. As for all the unsaved dead appear. Where every man who has rejected Jesus Christ will give account for every idle word. Stand before a holy God who cannot lie. Revelation 20, 11, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. Whose, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great. <coughs> Stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in it, in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. What a scene that will be. All the great professing atheists of our day will be standing before God. My, my, my. What a crowd. George Bernard Shaw, great writer, but rejected Jesus Christ. So many famous people. Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds in history, in hell because he rejected Jesus Christ. He'll stand before God. My, my, my. See, if, if you've trusted Jesus Christ, you bypassed that judgment. Jesus Christ took that judgment in your place for sin. You still get judged. You get judged as a servant. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Every man may give account of the thing, the, those things which he did in the body, whether they be bad or good, and of what sort they are. So, but our sins were judged on the cross by Jesus Christ. You, if, if you bypass Jesus Christ, you're going to face God and have to give account. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What if, that, what if that's true? What if, what, if, what if God is right? My, my, my. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The only rebuttal to the lake of fire is reaching out to that blood-stained cross. Of Jesus Christ. Brother Phil Gabbard talked about the grace of God today. For by grace are you saved through faith. He said I fear lest any corrupt you from the simplicity that is in Christ. You don't have to face that judgment for your sin at the great white throne. You can allow Jesus Christ to take that judgment for you. By simply reaching out by faith and say, Lord, I know I'm a mess. I know I'm a sinner. 
And Lord, I'm asking you the best way I know how to have mercy on me, a sinner. You go to him from the heart, a repentant heart. The Bible says repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. He won't refuse you. Why would he refuse you? Now, what if, what if God is right? What if Jesus Christ is the Savior? And he is. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Is that the name of Jesus? Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Have you trusted him? If God's right and you've never trusted Jesus Christ, you better get that out of the way today. I'm done for everyone to stand up. What if? What if you die today without Jesus Christ? What if? The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God don't want you to go to hell. The devil, the, the hell was created for the devil and his angels. It wasn't created for you. If you go to hell, it's not God's fault. He made a way. He says, believe him, receive him, embrace him, trust in Jesus Christ. The altar's open today. If you've never trusted Christ, why not? Don't die in your sins. Give them to Jesus Christ. The altar's open. Won't you come? Whosoever will, let him come. And the Spirit and the bride say, come. And he that heareth, let him come. And whosoever will, come and drink the water of life freely as we sing. 271. I've 